What's up guys, my name is Eli Clark. I'm a sports videographer and creative at App State. Today in this video, I'm gonna be giving you guys the best lenses that I would recommend for sports videography, specifically football and basketball because those are the two main sports that I shoot. And I'm gonna be kind of going through the different scenarios that I would recommend each lens and like how you would use them. And then just why I would recommend the lens to you. Um, so I got two lenses that I use um, every time I shoot sports that I'm gonna be recommending and going over in this video. Um, so yeah, I hope it helps you out. The first lens I would recommend is the Tamron 28-75 f2.8. Now I actually have this lens on my camera right now, um, so I'm not gonna be able to like hold it and show it to you, but at 28, it is wide enough to get those nice and wide shots, and at 75, it's tight enough to get as tight as you need, especially when shooting basketball. Now, with this lens being f2.8, if you don't understand what that means, basically, this is your lens, or yeah, the lens aperture hole, and this is at f2.8. So if you go up to like f4, it gets a little smaller. If you go up to f8, it gets smaller. So the f-stop is just how big your aperture hole is in your lens, and the lower your f-stop, the more blurry your background is going to be. So right now I'm at f2.8, which is as low as the f-stop goes. So the background is going to be nice and blurry. So if I went up to f4, uh, the background would not be as blurry and there wouldn't be as much light let into the camera. So that's the big thing with f2.8 is you get as much light let into your camera as you need, especially if you're in like a dark high school gym or even a dark college gym, you'll get enough light for shooting indoors, no matter what camera you're on. So that's why the f2.8 on this 2875 is such a big deal and it's so nice. And this lens is fairly affordable. I mean, it's like eight, $900 new. So that's pretty good price for a lens of this quality. Um, the autofocus on this lens is just amazing. And yeah, so if you shoot autofocus, this lens is great. Now I will say as a disclaimer, if you shoot manual focus, I would go with the Sony 24 to 70, the Sony 24 to 70 instead of the Tamron. And the only reason for that is because the focus ring is in front of the zoom ring on the Sony lens, which is how it normally is on any cinema lenses or any other lens other than Tamron lenses. So I'm not sure why they did that. It is hard for me to manual focus on this Tamron lens, so I usually don't do it. But yeah, I hope to get the Sony lens because I usually shoot manual focus when I'm shooting sports. So yeah, the Tamron has been great with autofocus. It's a great lens. I 100% recommend it, especially if you're just starting out or something like that. But if you do want to shoot manual focus, I would go with the Sony. It is a lot more expensive. That's why I recommend the Tamron instead of that. But yeah, this lens at 28 millimeters is perfect for pregame uh, footage. So basketball, football, pregame, you can get up nice and close to the players and shoot wide at that 28 uh, millimeter focal length and it's just it's great now i throw this lens on a gimbal when i'm shooting football and doing pregame, and it works perfectly because like i said you get that nice shallow depth of field and it's not too heavy of a lens so it can go on a gimbal and just perfectly fine and then while i'm shooting in-game footage for basketball zooming into 75 just gives me that flexibility to get up nice and tight while they're on my side of the court now, if you're looking to shoot on both sides of the court, like you're looking to shoot on the baseline to the other side of the court, then I wouldn't recommend this lens because it's not going to be tight enough to get all the way to the other side of the court. Uh, but I do have a lens coming for you. Don't worry. But yeah, this lens, if you're shooting basketball coming to you and you're sitting on the baseline, like right under the basket, this is the perfect lens. I mean, there's no lens that gets better than this when you're under the baseline. The next lens I would recommend is the Sony 70-200 f2.8 Mark II. Now, do I recommend this lens exactly? Yes and no. And the reason I say that is because of the price tag on this lens. I mean, this lens is close to $3,000. It was not cheap. <laughs> um, there is a Mark I version that is a lot cheaper than this. It's like $1,000 cheaper. And you might be like, okay, so what are the differences? They're both f2.8, they're both 70 to 200s. This lens, the autofocus is a tad bit better. I mean, you're not really going to notice it if I'm being honest. And this lens also has an aperture ring. So I don't know if you can see this right here, but let me cover my face. It has an aperture ring. It won't focus, but it's all good. So if that's a big deal to you, that might be worth $1,000. I don't think it is personally. 
but the main reason I went with this lens over the Mark 1 is because of the weight. This lens, the weight doesn't compare to the Mark 1. It's so much lighter, it's crazy. Now there's also a 7200 f4 version that's cheaper than the f2.8 and if that's in your budget I would go with that. Don't break the bank to get the f2.8 Mark II. You can rock with the f4. It will be just fine for you. You might have to crank your ISO up a little bit depending on what camera you're shooting on but yeah any Sony 7200 is just perfect because at 70 you're wide enough to get wide when you're shooting football so if someone's running at you to the end zone 70 is wide enough to get wide and then if you're shooting on the other side of the field 200 is enough to get you there now it'd still be a little wide at 200 um, if you're shooting all the way on the other side of the field but that's when you can throw your camera in crop mode um, or if you're on an fx30 it's already a crop sensor camera so you're going to get that extra uh, range but yeah, for most of the field, the 7200 will cover it perfectly fine. And yeah, that's this is the football lens. Now for basketball, I also use this lens. And you might be like, okay, well, would you, where would you be using this lens from? So I also use this lens on the baseline. Now, usually if I'm using the 7200, I'll sit in the corner of the court because I can get wider at 70 millimeters shooting from the corner than I can right underneath the basket. So if there's like a dunk or something, I can pull out nice and wide to get the, their full body when they're dunking it. And then I can also get tight on the other end of the court with this 200, but no problem. This lens is perfect for that. And then I also use this when I'm shooting like from the stands or from higher up somewhere to get like a different angle. So yeah, this lens is really versatile. You can use it really however you want. And same with the uh, 28 to 70. The 28 to 70 is actually probably the most versatile lens that I, I mean, it is the most versatile lens I use because you can go all the way up to 75 or pull all the way out to 28. So the possibilities are endless, but those are the two lenses that I would 100% recommend for sports videography. Now, if you are rec or interested in picking up my basketball LUT pack, all the, video, all, all the videos you saw in this video, um, all the basketball videos, they were colored with my basketball LUT pack. So there will be a link in the description to pick that up if you want it. Um, but yeah, I appreciate you guys watching this video. Um, let me know if you have any questions or anything in the comments. And yeah, I'll see you on the next one.